also have Alash joining us. What's up? How are you doing, man? Like, we've seen some very nice music. Yeah, I'm awesome. Well, I'm fine. Not so happy anymore. Alright, so now you're a uh, natural uh, specialist and you can like watch <laughs> Sunday Sapsimka doing misplays with Pancho and he'll be like, oh yeah, I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, shots fired. Yeah, man. shots fired, Nemesh. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, hope so, we'll see. Yeah, this is like, you know, the protection of the casters. Like, you mm -hmm. can sit here, relax, and be like, I don't think that play is that good. <laughs> Instead of being stressed in the, you know, in the booth or like just sitting in front of the, of RDU, just staring at you with this, you know, gaze of death. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely easier. All right, guys. So, I mentioned Sivka and RDU. Uh, Stanista versus RDU, that would be an amazing match. The guys are playing uh, almost the same lineup, and um, the winner is actually going to advance in top 8, loser is going to be eliminated, and then the winner is going to play versus either Colento or Besmar Mota. So uh, you can see this is our bracket. We have Impact Lothar already in top 8 waiting for the rest of the guys. We'll have a lot of matches today, a lot of matches. Um, not everything will be played today, but everything will be streamed. So don't worry, we're not doing any backstage matches. Yep. Everything will be here, casted by me, Forsen, and uh, all the guys around. Like you can see, the room is full, there are pros behind us, we're having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Here at uh, DreamHack Bucharest. So let's talk about the lineups. The difference is Rogue for RDU and um, Warlock for Stanislav Sivka both play Warrior and Druid. Yes, but I don't think we'll be seeing the Green Patron Warrior from RDU. He's known to be a more of the classical warrior type. Um, and also show. I think Stan Sivka is not going to play combo in his Druid. Uh, I don't think he played combo through the whole tournament until now. I think that he actually might switch it up because uh, right, yeah. if people think that he's not playing the combo, that's the most lethal and deadly combo there is, you know, the surprise. Maybe. So I think he will switch it up uh, for this. He was playing a lot of anti-aggro decks and I think that his opponents will not be playing aggro in case he sticks with his decks from yesterday, but I'm pretty sure he will switch it up and I'm pretty sure RDU can't be sure about that, so he's just going to play decks that he feels comfortable with without trying to mind game too much. And that's, that's the kind of player he is. That's a very good strategy for Conquest format as well. So the players are ready. We're going to see Druid versus Warrior. Um, yeah. Oh, thought I was going to concede there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a v well, Druid conceding would be surprising because it's yeah. a very good matchup for the Druid player. So we see uh, Gorhaul uh, from RDU and that makes me think this is a similar deck to what Lothar played considering their teammates and all. So I think we might see some uh, very similar, a very similar build here. We haven't seen unstable ghoul from from Lothar. So no, it's a, it's a, it's a bad card. I think or do you told him to take it Just out? Just cut it, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so interesting thing is here that Stan Sivkes may be thinking about keeping Ancient of Lore and actually does it, wow. which is without the coin, without yeah. wild growth, only one inner bit to go. I mean, Agent of Lore is like super good versus Warrior. If you can play that on turn seven, it's insane. But I mean. Without the wild growth, you're gonna have a really bad curve here, and it's picking up that savage roar, which is already interesting because last and yesterday he was playing the no combo. Yeah, trip. and now we see, as I said, that he has switched it up. Uh, it's really bad to stick to the same strategy. You get predictable, always changing your deck in a in a format like this, except for like one time where you might not to mind game them, you know. Yeah, yeah. So like, w but well, we can change the the decks now after every round, so the players can mix decks more. But uh, Alish, can you tell us more about Stanislav Sivka? Because we talked about him yesterday. Maybe people are joining up right now, like they don't know the the man. Where everybody knows how to you. Oh uh, well, Stan Sivka is a Magic the Gathering pro from Czech Republic. I uh, actually traveled with me here, uh, and like he won the pro tour like three years ago, I think, with X. If you're a Magic the Gathering fan, you probably know the deck. So, uh, he's really known there. He like he tries to play both of the games, but right now he told me that he really wants to start focusing more on Hearthstone. He thinks like Hearthstone is way to go. He likes the community and everything else about it. So, you, yeah. You can see here that he's actually thinking about not attacking here. Just to play around Battle Rage. Pretty and I was talking about this the whole tournament. No one ever did it. And this might be the first time we actually see someone play around Battle Rage. He can't be sure what kind of warrior this is from RDU. Uh, so it might not be worth attacking here. But he thinks that, okay, if I don't attack here, next turn it's going to be really awkward because I can't really innovate out that uh, Durant Claw. Mm -hmm. I will have to hero power again. And then I miss two damage if this is in fact not Grim Patron. So he's going to go ahead and attack here. <laughs> Look at his face. Yeah, he's he doesn't like it. Like, he doesn't yeah. like it. I don't want to attack, but I have to. Yeah, because he, he will be hero powering next turn unless he picks up a Shade uh, or Wild Growth. 
Forsen, how crazy is this? Like, you think about... You shapeshift and you think about attacking versus warrior? Like, seriously? Yeah. It's, <laughs> what it's, is this meta game? It's good It's good to think about stuff like that. And no one has done it until now. I talked about it all day yesterday what, uh, that you shouldn't do it. If you know it's Green Patron, he can't be sure. So he's going to take the risk anyway and attack because next turn is Hero Power, as I said. And you don't want to miss two damage. To yeah, I, I, I love the decision here. But mm -hmm. still, it's that, you know, the fact that you are not attacking warrior, how the meta game changed because of the Green yeah. Patron deck again. Another dead draw here. Keeping that Ancient Roar, I mean, we saw Life Coach keep Dr. Boom without the coin uh, with Paladin, but I mean, like... I it understand was a second stroke, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that kind of a little, little bit... I understand keeping Ancient of Lore with Innervate, because then you have a guaranteed Ancient of Lore on 5, which is very important in this matchup, but you throw away a chance to get Wild Growth and get the tempo. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the deck, but then I can understand keeping it as a valid strategy. Yeah, but I, it's not going to pay out here. I mean... He can't innovate out no, that due to the claw. Well. And if he doesn't do that, what is he going to do on turn four? He's going like, to have to swipe like an Acolyte maybe? Like that's his plan or? I think he's getting really punished right now for it. Yeah, yeah. he got also really oh, unfortunate with the draws done. All right, so what about the warrior, by the way? Like, are you having his hand? Is this hand good? I mean, Death's Bite is really good. Um, the Warrior's Hand is good, I would say. Uh, he doesn't have a Shredder, but he has uh, Death's Bite, he has Acolyte, exactly. he has Cruel right now. And he has, still has the coin to coin out um, Dr. Boom or Baron Gedon into Baron Gedon or Dr. Boom on turn 6 7. So his hand is really good, yeah. You also have the removal, so like once you pick up Shield Blocks, uh, shields, you have Shield Slam as well, like you have everything you need right now. And actually, like, since so good for him right now because Rude doesn't do any pressure, so he can just chill and play this slow. Yeah. Acolyte of Pain on turn three versus Druid is decent. There's the wild growth, but uh, now it's awkward because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wish he drew it last turn. Yeah, you oh. want you want to kill that Acolyte of Pain with swipe, probably. I mean. I think you can still swipe, like, don't have to bother about white grow because you have yeah. a you have whatever on, on five, innervate, boom, innervate, lore. You have a, a, a six play as well. If you swipe here, then you can actually innervate out Dr. Boom uh, because he's going to have a death spite, but that's not really going to do much unless he attacks face and sets up for whirlwind execute Dr. Boom. But I don't think anyone would attack face just to play uh, around the... Uh, Innervate Dr. Boom. Yeah. I, I don't think I, a wild girl does anything here. Like, probably just swipe. Is the Even if it sounds terribly. Well, if I mean, if he uses wild growth here, uh, it doesn't really accomplish much. Yeah, exactly, like exactly. Oh, wow. He might actually go for Druid of the Claw, Druid of the Claw into next turn wild growth, uh, which setups for like um, Dr. Wow. Boom turn six. That we haven't seen that actually. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I like that. I mean, Execute, Fire War Axe, there's so many things to deal with that. And now he doesn't have the Innervate for uh, Dr. Boom or... By the way, the BGH. I mean, it's not actually like, it doesn't do that much to him because he can Wild Grow. I mean, he plays the Dr. Boom one turn later, but also he'll be able to play the Asian of Lore at the same time. So it doesn't really bother him that much, but... Yeah, we're gonna see a Death Spite here for sure. Yeah, Death Spite is here. But a very interesting approach to the to the game plan from Stanislav Sivka, playing through it in a very different way than we're used to. Which doesn't mean it's wrong, like, we'll see how the game pans out. <laughs> yeah, so this is definitely Wild Grow Hero Power, just going into Depth of Boom things soon. Uh, coming, coming back to Death Spite, like, if you play Death Spite on 4, there's nothing on board, you, you will not attack. Because there can always be like a yeah, five you will not attack. Minion. You will not attack. Uh, it depends on what on what turn it is and if you have acolytes in your hand or not. Uh, but most of the times you will not attack because you're you really want to get Alexstrasza value. So damage to face doesn't matter at all. So I'm not sure what he's thinking about here, but there is only one play and that's Wild Growth Hero Power. Uh, it's it's fairly obvious in my opinion. But what can he be thinking about here? Why is he taking so long? I mean, he might be just like mind gaming, maybe a little bit, you know, thinking like, okay, I make RD thing, I have five drop in hand. It worked for Lothar before. Yeah. But that's different because that's uh, that's Warrior and, and that was like, there was like Brawl and stuff that, like, there's nothing you can really play around by mind gaming here as the Warrior. Well, um, you are suggesting that you have a five drop. Like, if you think a lot about it. Um, yeah, he's saying he has a Druid of Claw, maybe, you know, that kind of stuff. Or maybe Keeper, even, like, yeah. Keeper of the Grove. 
Mm. Yeah, keeper would make sense. Yeah. Uh, do you play the keeper or do you wild growth? So this is a bit awkward because if you use the coin right now for shield maiden, you can't really use coin of the next boom. Mm -hmm. But I still think what? that. Um, kind of want a board. You want something on the board for sure, yeah. And you can always uh, shield slam or BJH uh, Doctor Boom if it comes out, so you have something to play next turn. So coining out the the, the shield maiden here is definitely a good but play, I think. Why exactly would you like to have something on board? I mean, the thing is, like next Two. turn, next turn, whatever happens, it's gonna be either Asian of Lore or Doctor Boom. That's why he played the wild Bird, right? So uh, if you're gonna have a board right now against uh, uh, Asian of Lore, you're totally good. You just good with your weapon. And against Dr. Boom here, VGH, and you will not be able to play H uh, Dr. Boom anyway. So there is no point for you to keep a coin at, at like at this point, because you're not gonna play the Boom next turn, no matter yeah. what happens. There is some merit I mean, here. I mean, if, 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 he, if he plays Asian of Lore, he might, but this I is mean, Boom more. Yeah, there is some merit to playing Angel of Lore here, because that will, uh, if he doesn't trade the Shield Maiden with Angel of Lore, which he probably won't, then that leaves the Shield Maiden at 4 HP, which is swipeable. If you play the Dr. Boom here, uh, you know that the boom bots will die to the whirlwind effect and if he has an execute he can just clear everything here and execute so he's really worried about that drawing cards might be the better play here uh, we'll see what he thinks is the better play well without cards his hand is actually pretty bad with double swipe wrath yeah I mean the swipe is quite useful in case he plays the ancient lord because that will take one damage but it will take one damage either way because he has to attack with the death spite yeah I like the boom here better uh, just because like the board is gonna be cleared next turn anyway and with the boom bots you actually have chance to get rid of the uh, shield maiden well normally when I play like. this matchup from the Druid's perspective I really oh. want to have minions in my hand like I want to play those um, Pilot the Shredders, Ancients of Lord, Althubs, Dutch Belchers, just to build up the board and then draw into spells as finishers. So he has plenty of options here. Uh, he could uh, execute Dr. Boom, he could BGH it, he could Shield Slam it. Uh, you probably want to play the BGH because there's not a lot of targets in Druid. The other Ragnaros? Uh, only, only Ragnaros is the other target. Uh, so using the the big game hunter here is okay. Um, you do want to attack first though because you don't want BJ to die. It's very likely. All right, can she made him die to the bombs? And she actually did. It does. Are you definitely upset about that outcome? Yeah, it the the odds of it killing it was uh, not as high as it surviving. So that was definitely a, a big hit for RDU, but it's still fine. He's still. In the lead, I would say in this mm -hmm. in this game, even though it's a uh, Druid favorite matchup. So that acid drake is actually, actually, actually really amazing. good. It's yeah. amazing. You it's can really good. For two, draw a card. You just draw two cards and remove the board. Yeah, like playing a yep. floor into that big GH and not doing anything else would be a bit weird. <laughs> but here, let's uh, clear the board, set up a four four, no damage. Mm -hmm. Make it really quite better as well. Like if something with five health appears. And there is a, a Ragnaros for the Warrior player. Um, so he has to make a decision now. He could clear this Drake and play Sylvanas, or he could just play Dr. Boom. Dr. Boom. I think that you want to play Dr. Boom here. Because um, you could actually you could actually shield slam your own Sylvanas if your opponent has a Rag or something. But um, Swipe is going to be amazing here. Yeah. Swipe and Keeper is going to be the key here to clearing the board. Hopefully his Drake won't die. He might consider playing the Keeper first uh, in order to Save prevent, Drake. Pre Spread exactly, the damage. Uh, prevent the Drake from dying. But uh, there is a problem, and that's the fact that uh, the odds of uh, Boombots hitting minions are increased and not yeah. face. So he has to think uh, what he thinks is the best play here, and he wants to gamble for face Boombots, I guess. Uh, he was trying to get the Keeper, I believe. I don't think the difference is that much bigger, but... I, I think, I mean, uh, you always want uh, like a lot of minions on the board, uh, whether or not they're powerful or not, because they can combo well with Savage or whenever he gets it. And he has... To oh, oh my that god! He lost the Azadrake anyway. Wow. He That's tried rough. to protect it, but Azadrake is always going down with the bombs. So, for RDU, it got even on RNG, let's say? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would uh, play the rag here, because even if your opponent has a BGH, you have a Baron get on follow-up to clear that, uh, which is really good. You could 
Oh, and it hits it. And it's actually a good hit. Absolutely you won't hit, hit that minion. This means that to kill the, the Ragnaros, you have to use both swipe and... Uh, well, he can combo. No, no, no. I think it might actually Asian the floor into BGH. I don't know how many cards Tansivka has in his deck. You already now. used BGH. Oh. No, that, no, was, no, that, that was, was RDU. RDU. That was oh, RDU. yeah, yeah, yeah. RDU. yeah. RDU used the BGH, yeah. Um, so I don't know how many cards Tansivka has in his deck. That, that's a really hard gamble, though. Yeah, like, it's really gamble. I bet he has at least 15, 16 cards left in his deck mm -hmm. and... Well, what you can do is like if you don't get a BGH, you can still play Shade, and um, and then you have a ch you you have some kind of board. So Ragnaros is not going to kill you, and if the board survives, maybe you will be able to get the pool. Yeah, I mean, like what I don't really like about the combo here is like uh, how do you then kill your opponent? Because you I think you, you might have two combos. Uh, I, I don't think he plays the uh, double combo. Like uh, when he was talking to me yesterday about. Uh, playing the deck, he said like, I don't really like double combo. If I play combo, I'll just play one. Maybe so that's my game. Maybe it's my game. You were in this group after all. I wasn't. I wasn't. No, you weren't. No, you were in Sixes group. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still, like, if you use the combo, you just grind them down. Then, like, just continue playing minions, continue continue killing those minions, and yeah. you try to to win the game. And I mean, minions. he has really good minions too, like Asian of Floor for draw and to shade next turn. You know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so everything is good here. I have no time for well, I guess now it's out of the question. Yeah, yeah, not not anymore, but uh, it looks decently. Mm, double shade. Double shade shredder. That looks pretty promising. Can maybe. you swipe Hero Power Savannah? <laughs> yeah, that's the question. Dude, if you play, if you, if you play mm -hmm. uh, Shredder uh, Double Shade, you will lose to the bro. Uh, yeah, if no, he, if no, he has no, a bro. to the Gedon. Oh, Gedon too. He's, oh, yeah. He steals the minion, like if it pops out, like. Yeah, whatever is being clapped. Uh, uh, no, steals. he can't shade. Uh, he has to swipe, I think. Yeah. With a shredder. Do you really uh, swipe actually, Hero actually you can you, you can play Angel Lore here if you want to, uh, but uh, he's gonna develop uh, Shredder here, I think. Yeah. I think it's fine. It's too much stuff like you lose too. You lose to Brawl, you lose to get it, and you lose mm -hmm. like so much stuff. Double whirlwind. Wow, that's so weird. He's actually considering a shade before uh, the Shredder. Why I think Shredder is an obvious play here, but uh, he why wants can, can you explain more about why Shredder is better? Because Shredder uh, actually deals way more damage instantly, and uh, we have no weapon equipped for the warrior. Uh, you can just keep beating off that armor and like then in transition into a uh, card draw and try to get your combo because I but don't then again shade is kind of baiting out Geddon yeah sure but you can't deal with a Geddon yeah so why would you want to bait out the Geddon <laughs> true you have nothing you have nothing against it unless you top the your BJ here calculate the risk not really yeah now you fish for BGH. so yeah this is fish for BGH yeah you get a BGH I mean well he got a dwarf but not the, not the right one. Yep, you can just. The only thing you can do is hero power here. Push shade. Yeah. And this is pretty rough too. Like, uh, this is this is lethal for Ardu next turn, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He can it is. shield slam. No, no, no. no, no it's just taskmaster. Oh, taskmaster. Just yeah. taskmaster. Drum. Yeah. Okay, so Ardu is winning one zero. And this is like really unfavorable matchup too. Yeah. Oh I yeah. Think yeah I think the fact that he kept Angel of Lore, yeah, without the coin, is the thing that lost him this game. I agree. You win with Druid because okay. you use Wild Gross and Innervates and stuff like that. That's the, really the key. Uh, Shades of Max Ramas as well. Like you want to have early game. Yeah, Basically, for sure. Just keeping the late game. Even though I I could understand the, the line of fault, but then he was too uh, open to the bad draws, like the draws of mm -hmm. end game cards, and he did. And he get did draw. He yeah. did draw those those cards. So if you Mulligan, uh, there was a bigger chance to get a smaller cards, then get into bigger and have an ac actually an, a normal curve. Uh, all right. So are you taking game number one versus Stanislav? Stanislav still keeping his Druid. Uh, for RDU, he still has Druid and uh, and the Rogue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's it's still fine. Yep. It's Dr still anyone's series. What do we know about RDU Force? Like you tested with RDU a lot. Mm -hmm. Who is this guy? He theory crafts a lot. Like he's one of the biggest tryhards I know. Like he <coughs> he optimizes decks really, really good. Uh, and I think a form like this actually favors him because he spends so much time uh, optimizing his decks for his opponents and stuff like that. So I think that um, RDU is the favorite in this matchup. But we've seen some impressive uh, plays from Stansivka. All right. So it can be anyone's game. We see a handlock here. 
from Stansivka, which is not super good versus Druid. No. Uh, Druid is slightly but favored. It, it can it can win for sure. Um, I mean, like usually, if Druid doesn't really have Keeper of the Grove, uh, or it just they don't have a BGH when you need it, like it's fine. But we already see Keeper. An important and fact might be that uh, Stanislav, as you said, is playing one combo. So if there is only one Savdor, that's not that great. Like mm -hmm. uh, versus Handlock, I like having double Savdor. Um, no, no, um, no. This RDU is RDU playing RDU Druid. Is Druid. RDU oh, RDU is, Druid. is actually yeah, playing yeah. Druid. So yeah, RDU yeah. might be playing double. Yeah, and I'm also sure. very sure that Sasifka plays double Savdor. Maybe not two force, but at least double Savdor. Yeah, that's that's usually probably double Savdor, but not double force. One force. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, probably. So great hand from uh, the Handlock player getting that uh, Drake. Too bad there's a silence though in the Druid hand. But like apart from that, Ardu's hand is actually pretty bad. Like he has uh, he has the Keeper, but that's like the only thing he actually has. Oh my God, the mind games. The Please mind games. stop it. Think of the children. <laughs> Think of the casters. <laughs> oh my God. So. Do you innervate the Shade turn one or not? I think uh, you save the double innervate to Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. yeah, turn three. yeah, that's a pretty good mind game here. Or just steal your coin from opponent and double inner rate coin. Yeah. Rag, right? Maybe he learned from life Easy. coach, and now that's the thing. Nihilum will be just waiting on turn one. Uh, He's just waiting for the rope for the fans. I swear to God, I will slap RDU. <laughs> <on this point. laughs> Time waits uh. for no one RDU. He decides to not do anything on turn one. That's really surprising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't expect this play. All right, so now Stanislavka, can he go to rope? He just relaxes. He has some pastries there, <laughs> you know. Oh my it's god, are you kidding me? <laughs> I right mean, now? Oh, fee, oh, fee. <laughs> <laughs> like, RDU, you, you rope me, I'll rope you too. Oh, no problem. I think no actually, problem. I think it actually works against yeah. RDU. <laughs> <laughs> Stanislav has so much experience. This guy yeah. is so careful. Just chill out, patient. drink just a monster. Like, no problem. This is not a picnic trip, bros. <laughs> <laughs> Play some cards, Stone. Oh, it, was, it was funny. Okay. So Ardu is now, do I innervate the Shredder? That's the question. Are you <laughs> <Yeah>. really, uh, <laughs> is this really going to be you happening? Got, you got is this there. really happening right now? You got me there for uh, a moment. I was, I was looking for a Shredder there. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh. Forsen, you really re broke down shape shift and attack or not attack into phase with Warrior. Yeah, do you but see any reason not to attack with No, <laughs> there's no reason. Like Playing around Molten Giants doesn't make sense. You can always choose to not attack later. It's, that's sense. And he's just smiling right now. They, they, they both they know, know. They, they know, know. They know. They know. They're full of shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god. I feel like they're trolling the casters, the viewers, at the same time. Yeah. I don't know if this is more resin sleeper, or OPOP, or forehead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all of them. Maybe all of them. Yes, yeah, so I think this is like probably just gonna be the tap. Um, I'm actually surprised Tensifka plays double Dark Bomb. Like yesterday, he told me that he doesn't really like Dark Bomb. That he likes Coil over it. But the problem, this probably seem like means that he doesn't play Coils anymore. I would say. Um, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so, so another another ten minutes. Another turn. ten minutes. Well, mm -hmm. well, you know, at least here this is actually a pretty bad turn for you, and not having a free drop. Yeah. I mean, he has no wild growth right now. He has no innervate. Uh, he has no shade. So it's actually pretty tough for him. Hmm. Oh, he's just going for it. Now I need to stall the fun. They had the fun, but now it's all serious. How do you really disappointed? There's the Molten Giant. Damn, we should have played played around that. <laughs> no no hero powers. Warlock is already at 26. All right. So this is probably just going to be the Keeper. Um, yeah, I yeah. there is no other player than the Keeper. Yeah, I'm trying to think about anything else, but uh, nothing comes to mind. Innervate, innervate drag. Am I playing the Shredder? <laughs> or am I keepering here? No, I innervate, innervate drag. <laughs> like with this hand, I would do it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so from now on though, uh, the Druid's hand is not that bad, um, I guess, but... Stan's hand is actually pretty bad. I mean... If he picks up another four drop to four turn six or whatever, 
This might be a little bit better, but still yeah. not really too great. Do you think that there's any merit to double Dark Bomb? I don't think so. No. To force the Druid to use Hero Power instead of his Fire Drop. You know his hand is bad, though. So if he has to use a uh, Hero Power in turn 5, there's nothing he can play. Because he would have played a Shade if he had it before. And Sun Fury. <sighs> That's not going to do anything. Are you playing a Sun Fury here? You are not going to overdraw, right? Yeah, no, you're not overdrawing. So no. You can just um. pass. I mean, you could trade with a Belcher and Dark Bomb, I guess. Well, you don't have. Uh, we don't know how many different Dragas he's playing. Probably one, right? Hmm. Mm, yeah, that's most li the most used one right now. One Argus build. So only, only Belcher. Is he's like going to play it because he wants to be able to trade with the Belcher. He could owl the Belcher and the uh, Dark Bomb next turn uh, to clear it. I give it to kill a slime. And sure, this is also like pretty fine because like next turn he's gonna play Belcher and turn six. Even if he draws Giant, he still can like Giant into Sun Fury. He's still gonna play Giant for only for four mana, so mm -hmm. doesn't hurt him too much to play it, and he gets some board at least. Oh, if he draws Giant, he will be able to tap Giant. Or that, like that, that he can do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we are going to see the Belcher. Belcher and seems upset. Yeah, I mean, I would be too. No wild growth, no inner rates. Uh, it's a pretty clunky hand, but I mean, he does have. Uh, he doesn't have a BGH. Uh, he but does have Ragnaros, which is quite okay, but it's a coin flip as always. I mean, he has no BGH, but Sunsitka doesn't have giants, so it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, so. Yeah. First thing you suggested killing the Belcher. You yeah. love killing those Belchers. No, I Did think I like would you? I, I mean, right now, it, I, you just want to play on Curve, yeah. basically. So you just play your own Belcher, and uh, you can use the Sun Fury to trade with Slime later. That's why he played it preemptively, I think. This draw is not really exciting at all. But on the other hand, if you get uh, double Wild Growth now. Yeah, I think like what you do here is uh, you red for one, uh, the Belcher. Hero you power. probably Hero Power and, and Wild Growth, yeah. so you can rag next turn. Mm -hmm. I agree. Why not double wide growth? Because it doesn't do anything. Yeah. You don't need nine mana, you yeah. only need eight. I mean, like, you can combo next turn, but Ooh. you're not gonna kill him with a combo. He refuses to use the wide growth. That's really interesting. I don't like that. Yeah, you're not really afraid of dying, so taking that for three damage to the face, or two damage actually, because you get at one armor. And also, like, swipe is quite an important sometimes late game, when you just maybe need some damage to go past, like, uh -huh. Molten Giants. But maybe um. he's thinking that uh, his hand is so bad that he can't just use wild growths and he needs to keep them to turn 10 to be able to cycle damage cards. The longer the game goes on though, the more favored the handlock is. So yep. you don't want to go for the late game. You want to go for uh, the Yolo swag place and try to finish it early on combo on turn 9 or 10 if possible. Uh, but still, playing Ragnaros next time will be really dangerous. Like if you hit phase, you enable Moltens. Ooh, that's a pretty good pickup, actually. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if you heal your... S yeah, you heal your Sun Fury here. You might. You don't want to heal yourself when you have Moltens. Uh, and it's really good on the curve. You might consider playing the Ancient Watcher as well, because you have an Owl and a Sun Fury, but... I think I like uh, healing up the um, Sun Fury again. Otherwise, it dies to Hero Power and a 5-drop. Yeah, that's good. Also, if there's a second swipe. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean but you can't know that. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like... Um, also, like, setups... For, for example, Asian of War, kill it for sure. Like, even if he has, like, red Asian mm -hmm. of War or something. Uh, and he wants to, like, play the Dr. Boom and clear the board. So his bo Dr. Boom is going to be on clear board, and it's going to be really powerful for him. Yeah, so... What you could do here... Uh, you just play the Taunt, Geo Power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do. Uh, this is... Not a good hand at all. I mean, if you play Taunt here and Hero Power, the opponent can't really kill your Druid of the Claw and play Dr. Boom on turn 7. So it's it's quite okay. You've seen, you've seen also one Dark Bomb, so... Uh, Hellf Hellfire is bad here, uh, because it doesn't really do much but one damage, because you kill your own board anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, he's gonna go and charge here though. That's uh, actually interesting, but... It's going for face. Yeah, it's actually quite... Ooh. It's actually quite good, like, um... 
I mean, if RDU uh, has a minion board, which is probably not going to happen. Yeah. But like, if he draws actually into a second Savage Roar in two turns, he might have just double combo. And yeah. That uh, the could the be thing something. is that uh, he also saw um, Mortal Coil uh, last turn, and Mortal Coil is the only efficient way to deal with this, except for you can play Argus as well, I guess. But then you trade uh, your Farseer for the four four. Is he trying to give himself a slight chance to win with Ragnaros? Is he so desperate that to combo next turn and then get <laughs> the Warlock super low? I don't think Draxus? so. There's so many, there's so many like uh, heal bots nowadays and like taunts and some furies that the Ragnaros will probably not hit face. But you've seen some fury. Yeah, you've seen one, but there's still Argus, there's still uh, Moltens, there's still heal bots, another some furies like this. So give yourself twenty percent chance to win the game. Wow, I'm actually I'm very not, surprised yeah. about not playing Dr. Boom there, though. Not sure if I like this. Well, this will enable better plays starting from turn 8. Yeah, but this, uh, this is gonna be a rag for sure, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, if you hit face, it's bad, because the Moltens will already cost one less, and the Sunfury is one, and like... But is it actually bad? Like, we see no Ton Giver for Stan Sitka uh, right now. So I think there's actually a Sun Fury Protector, uh, which is on the, on the left side of the Dark Yeah, one. yeah. There's, oh. a, there's a Sun Fury in oh. his hand. Okay, but so yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but when it's not visible. Yeah, but you don't play around the uh, cards you don't know about. Like, yeah, we're, yeah. we're just saying from the Druid's perspective. Oh, here. definitely. From Druid's perspective, it's bad to hit face. So, so what do you guys think about, like, combo first? It's turn eight next. I don't. Um, I don't no, like it. I don't no, like, like it. If you combo first, what's gonna happen to more? Like a turn after that, it's gonna be molten, anti heal, heal bot, sun fury, and like. That's something you would expect. Even yeah. even Jaraxxus can come out because yeah. it costs eight. Uh, if you had it in his hand. Oh yeah, true. Because the authority sun. Yeah, and there's oh, the combo. Gets it. So there's a double combo there. That's that's huge. Yeah. So you just hear power face here, and then pray that he doesn't have. Actually, I think you hear power the the five, five. yeah the five five. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, he could get taunted um, with one HP. Okay. Um, so what's gonna stand? The Suddenly, this got really interesting. I think this play is quite easy. Uh, you trade the acid rake with the the Russian. You play Doctor Boom. You play Ancient Watcher, and you taunt up. Yeah. Watcher and Boom. Watcher yeah. And boom Watcher and, and Boom. Sun yeah. Yep. Sun Fury. That's really good. I mean, he might feel like he doesn't have to play around double combo. Like sometimes people just don't play about yeah, double. No one, no one plays around double combo really. Like it's it's not something it's worth worth playing around. Exactly. But the pr the question is uh, though, what does he taunt up? Does he taunt up Doctor Boom and the Ancient Watcher, or does he taunt up like uh, Ancient Watcher and a bomb? Because BGH is a possibility. We know that he has had a clunky hand. <laughs> the the Warlock player knows that, so he might considering doing it with the bomb here. Oh, well, he's doing uh, the oh. Watcher though. He's doing it with the Watcher and the Doctor Boom. It's uh, it's it's fine. Swipe, BGH, a hero power is quite all right here. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> quite we well, there, there's, oh, a there's a swipe, and he can uh, get the BGH from Wily Grove. Well, you no you hero power though. You do it. I mean, you could play. There is another play here, and that's uh, swiping swipe. the Sun Fury uh, and uh, innovating out the uh, Rag. Yeah. It's okay as well. Then you can hit uh, either face, either uh, the Sun Fury. Uh, I mean the Watcher or the Doctor Boom. But then you decline the double combo. Yeah, you do. But I mean uh, the Rack can hit face, and then you only need one combo. But you still are facing two taunts. Yeah. Silence your own I like, Rhino. I think I like drawing a card. I like I like uh, the the Rack play here actually. Yeah. And he's gonna go for the right play as well. Oh, like your, your two two hits are really good. Like One. okay, that's average. Face, and if you had the broom, you're yeah. really good. All right, so what is Ragnar going to head? Boom he is wants the, best. the boom. He goes to oh. face. Not really happy about so, it. So uh, if he clears, if he doesn't have any heal here and no taunt. He's gonna be one oh damage God. off lethal with the combo if the drag is, gets killed by BJ. You can still top the uh, second inner rate. You can, <laughs> but that doesn't help you because the breaking points is that you have two damage in, uh, from face and uh, four damage from tree, and so it doesn't actually help you because the boom is at six and the uh, ancient second watcher is at four. Draw. There's like if you top the innervate being already no, oh. bo both innervates are played. Both innervates are oh, played. Okay, you yeah. use the the second one for the rag. All right. Okay, this is Molten Molten. BGH. 
cage. And you don't tap here. Yeah. Um, no reason. I mean, you have lethal next turn. There's no brawl. You could dark bomb your own BJH to play on unleash. <laughs> <laughs> unleash the trend. Play a little bit better. Yeah. Also on brawl, right? Yeah, for there sure. There you go. You play around the what, what's it called? The the tree that decreases cost. Uh, the new tree, you know, that with tree, on, the tree on fire. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So. Silence, but not enough mana for all of this. So if you go for combo here, you trade, you... You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> no, actually, you c there's one play that um, that uh, makes you survive. 16. And that's and that's Force of Nature and, um, and the Keeper. Force of Nature on Dr. Boom and okay. Keeper on the 4-2. And then you can actually... You're still dead to Hellfire Dark Bomb. Yeah, 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 but in his perspective, he's not dead. But now he is dead for sure, no matter what he does. All right, so Stanislav Sivka is going to take game number two and tie the series versus RDU. Yep. Yeah. RDU just counting damage. Well played, conceding this. Now, that was a very unfortunate start for RDU. Yeah, it was indeed. No one goes to rates. But I mean, if you look at the Stun Sivka's hand, like Stun Sivka had no four drop apart from the Twilight Drake. So actually, like his hand wasn't really good either. So, I mean, you know. yeah. I mean, he had a uh, he had the uh, Belshon turn five though, and mm -hmm. and Drake. So I mean, it's all right, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think like Stun Sivka's hand was right, but uh, still an important win in this unfavorable matchup. Uh, still, already you seem to be close. All right, so right now the players are ready and we're going to jump into game number three. RDU have, has Druid, Stanislav Sivka still has Druid, I believe. So... Yeah, Druid, Rogue, and Druid. Yeah, we have a Warrior win for RDU and um, Warlock win for Stanislav. So it's going to be Druid versus Warrior. Yeah, and this is Grim Patron, so this is actually a really good queue. Like, you don't want to queue your Grim Patron Warrior into Rogue. So he didn't so. change it. He's still playing it. Mm -hmm. yep. He loves it. We love it as well. No, it's the hand is looking a bit better for you this time. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking here about like keeping red, maybe for some small minions, maybe for acolytes, that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, frothing. Mm -hmm. I think I think wrath is okay keep, but I would probably go a bit greedier and go for yeah. wild growth and uh, innovate, especially when you have that shade you. If you get a wild growth, you can coin that wild growth. If you get an innovate, you can innovate shade into wild growth. It's just like, yeah, it's so good. Is there any chance for RDU to mind game himself? Because he'll be thinking, all right, Sivka played it yesterday. So today he's for sure bringing Control Warrior. No, I don't think he's, he's doing that. I think he's... He I, mean, I mean, he switched up Druid, so, you know, there's yeah, some yeah. indication that he might, or he could switch other decks. Yeah, yeah, for sure, but... I think uh, it's more likely for it to be Green Patron mm -hmm. anyway. I mean, he he didn't switch the class Druid, he just switched like, uh, the combo card uh, for the more defensive ones like my control tech and stuff. It's very smart from Sivka, by the way, because if he, he played Druid first, showing, hey, I switched cards, and now he's skewing Warrior, so RDU might actually think that cards are switched, and Sivka didn't switch anything. Yeah, but they still keep the Wrath for that Green Patron later on, turn 5 slash 6. Very difficult hero part decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow, wow, he's actually thinking about well, the uh, fact th that he might he the druid might hero power him. Yeah, and then yeah. he might need it for battle rage. Yeah, but it, it, it it's not uh, it's not good because you have a despite anywhere. You're gonna take that damage mm -hmm. when you want. If he didn't have any weapon, I might consider it. But uh, if he does that, if he doesn't armor up here, then there's no way in hell that RDU will actually use hero power to face. He will just hero power and keep that armor. Yeah, never attack. And yeah. this, this is so crazy. The green patron deck just changing how we think about the game. Yeah, it's going to be an armor up here. It's the, the correct play. What does it say to RDU? RDU is thinking, hey, do we do it again? No, or? actually, he's, th he's thinking here that uh, he might have a fire war axe in his hand. Actually, uh, like, he might think like, he has a lot of weapons. Yeah, yeah and he, he doesn't want to equip Fire War X if he has a Death Spite on turn 4, because that would be wasted. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's thinking right now, but... Is he gonna... 
coining out the the shade is not that good here because it interrupts your curve greatly. I think you use hero power here. Play shade, play your shredder. But he wants to go and, and I, I mean he's he's re he's I mean, relying on his opponent playing uh, like acolyte, so he gets something to do next turn with the wrath. But uh, there will be no acolyte played. I think I think the frothing. Uh, is the better play. Also with Deathbite in the hand, like, uh, Acolyte is gonna draw more cards in the future. Uh, I'll probably turn 5, because you don't really have to yeah. turn 5 play right now, so you might as well just Acolyte uh, with a yeah. relevant effect of Deathbite. We'll see the frothing here for sure. Yeah. Playing around that Wrath, pretty good play. Can't get killed by the Shade. Uh, he needs... Oh, oh that's a really good card. Anyway. That's a really good card right now, because now he can Innovate turn five, uh, turn five mini, and then he goes to Shredder, and then there's like another. Yeah. Another what about just charging the cat into the two four? It's it's a good play. Yeah, that's the play. Um, that's a really good it's play. either that or low thub. Uh, you don't taunt it up. You either charge, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing with low thub, uh, why that is good is because if you low thub, uh, he can't really kill off the low thub unless he uses fireworks at four x and his um, and his uh, berserker. And if he doesn't uh, sacrifice the Berserker, you get a good trade with the 4 4 Shade next turn. So, both of the plays are good. He's thinking whether or not he should attack here, because if he has a weapon, he will use it to kill the, the cat anyway. So, uh, attacking here is actually an okay play. It's not. Like, if he knew that he had a Death Spite, he probably wouldn't do it. But, you know, he's gonna take that risk, I think. Or even with Death Spite, then this, this uh, Shade is being 6 point soul, and uh, the cat is. Uh, yeah, but then they might have, uh, if he has like Fire War X and uh, like Execute or Slam then or, then yeah, either Slam or Execute or, oh, he decides after, yeah, they let the rope decide for him, um, he decides to attack but he's getting roped, he's never attacked, to share, to share, uh, so this is probably just gonna be a death fight, yeah, for sure, cat, <sighs> Alright, so that's by killing the cat, Shade just getting 4-4, four, four, and now it's back to RDU. What do you do? Just buy the Shredder. Yeah. Slap it. Yeah, those are the turns for Druid that are like really, really straightforward. You just play on curve. Yep. And you that's all you have to you do. don't attack here though because of execute mm -hmm. possibilities, and also uh, you will still be able to trade up with a Belcher next turn if he plays one. Double inner rage. But oh yeah, he's not probably playing Belchers. I've seen some versions with Belcher, but uh, I don't think he's playing that. I don't think he plays also Taskmasters in this version. He plays double inner rage from Taskmasters probably. Wow, I'm not sure about that. I like. The mana. That can be quite annoying. Oh yeah. You battle rage here. Hmm. There's no other play. Yep. Drawing two cards. I mean, slamming that and uh, uh, enraging it is not worth it. Yeah, you want to filter cards, especially yeah. with those double enrage and doing much. You want to get uh, your emperor, basically. I mean, like if he if he has emperor right now, like next turn, if he draws it, he can just go uh, emperor enrage enrage whirlwind, and he has a full board, and he pretty much straight up wins from the point. Like unless. Uh, but actually, double innovate was already used. Double innovate was already used, right? Okay, so not even innovate combo kills. No, 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 only one. Only one. Only one. Only one. He Three coined one, out yeah. the sh uh, the shade. Okay. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that we will see uh, Lotha played mm -hmm. here uh, because next turn he can use uh, Wrath to buff the the mana addict. Lotha prevents uh, anything else than one execute from being played uh, because it will cost six mana. So that's pretty good play. It's a it's a bit problematic though because the acolyte will draw another card, uh, so you might want to consider just uh, keeping here. Um. Did you unstop shade? Um, not if you play if you play low thumb, you do that. Uh, you do but that, yeah. it, otherwise you don't because then it will just get executed. So he's gonna go ahead and silence here. No, it didn't do damage actually. Okay, wow. And there will be no attack from the shade, of course. Okay, um... Slowly accumulating those combo cards. It's time for a slam here. It's 
time to slam now. I think. Oh. Yeah. What are you looking for? Do you just want to deal to damage? You want to recycle uh, the slam. I mean, there's nothing too impressive in this deck. You want the the emperor. Um, I mean, it's, it's probably weapon. Like it's, weapon would be really nice. It's gonna be fight. yeah. I mean, it's gonna be slam, and then it's gonna be a ghoul turn most likely unless he picks up. Oh, there is the emperor. Uh, just double ghoul. Double ghoul is not very good. I think it'll be armor smith. Yeah. yeah. So let's see here. Um, wow, Savage Roar. Hang on a second. Savage Roar uh, yeah. and you Wrath. Uh, the Mana Addict becomes uh, 3, 5, 7, 7, 8, 15, 19 points of damage mm. and 21 points of damage. I think it's actually worth oh, it. No, yeah, but he will get armor as well. He will get uh, uh, three, armor. 3 armor. I think it's still worth it. Like, yeah, I mean, you're never gonna have more minions than this, basically. I mean, unless you have a combo. Yeah. yeah. So I guess he decides to go for Lotha. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it will go for Lotha bear, and then attack he will uh, attack face. It's uh, it's a pretty good turn to play <laughs> Doctor Boon though, uh, if he Lothabs, uh, but. You have to keep in mind that you might die next turn innovate if you, combo. yeah, innovate combo is a possibility. Yeah, I would really like the right stuff over here. I think it was like the best play. Yeah, I like it too. Mm. And time to attack. Oh, it's this actually like. Uh, it's actually a okay play. Yeah, exactly. Protecting the addict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the addict is actually gonna deal a lot of damage <laughs> next turn. Um, like it, it, it might deal more damage than the shade actually. So, but right now, <sighs> he's thinking. Oh, this is gonna be a hard turn for him because he needs to calculate uh, all the spells he can do to buff the mana addict. Savage roar right now. Um, 13, uh, 20, 21 damage. Uh, 23 damage. Yeah, savage roar is 23 damage, and then if he casts another spell. That's uh, 25 damage. So he's like really close to dying here. Uh, if he has a swipe and Savage Shore, that is lethal. lethal. Wait, but uh, he still has like Wrath and Wild Growth, so he can't play free spells. No, but if he has, if he has Savage Shore and, and Wrath here. Yeah. Uh, no, Savage Shore and Swipe, it's lethal. And he, he recognizes that and doesn't play Dr. Boom because of that. He wants to kill that man addict before he plays any minions because that is actually a very good synergy with Druid. Not something you want to put in your deck, but you know, if you get it from Shredder, you're happy. Yeah, you take it for free. Wild Grove is blank for now. Not really exciting. Yeah, you draw for one. The mana addict is gonna die anyway, so might as well just uh, toss it in. Cool. Oh, there's Dr. Boom, but it's a bit too late. Yeah. One card too late. What a rush. So, so he's, he's pushing with that damage, and... Uh, I mean, Patron Warrior doesn't have that many comeback mechanisms. It just needs to, just needs to kill. So is it worth it to play Wild Grove here? That's the question. I think it is, right? Yeah, to do that. Yeah, um, I mean, if you draw the combo mm -hmm. next turn, that's lethal. And uh, he's super scared here because why would you Wild Grove there if you don't have the combo? Like, but he's safe uh, for now. Um, Out of the reach of combo right now. Yeah. Uh, so you cannot do Dr. Boom BGH. Um. Maybe you just can so you play. Just keeper, yeah. Just keeper, hero power, BGH. Hero power. You hero power yeah, first. Hero power yeah. first, exactly. So your chances of keeper surviving is bigger. Your chance. Yeah. All right, the bomb is going to hit phase four. The other can kill the keeper now. Six to face. He's, he's gotta be happy about that. Mm -hmm. Six to face is better than uh, it killing a minion uh, with four health. So, oh god, he's he's really getting nervous here. Uh, he can't play around the combo anymore unless he top decks. Uh, <laughs> he, he could, he could if he goes like yeah, yeah, fiery warrix, yeah. whirlwind in rage. Yeah, but it's that's really not a awkward. winning play. That's no, like I think you just go for emperor and axe the. Yeah, but I mean, at this point, Stansifka is so sure that he has the combo. I mean, 
all signs uh, has pointed towards it. I mean, the the wild growth to turn nine and like, it, I would I would be so sure that he had combo here. That you might actually play around it. That I might actually yeah. play around it. But then again, how do you win the game? He's gonna he's going to play around it. Mm -hmm. And he's going to play the Emperor. Not getting that much value, but he wouldn't have gotten that much value anyway with those cards in hand because uh, they're so cheap already. Like, Inner Ridge is already uh, free and the Whirlwind is only one. So, yeah. Alright, so Thurston on board. Forced yeah, on time to drop the boom. You can draw a card first. You drop a card first, see what you get. Probably just play the boom afterwards. Uh, what can change your mind here? Uh, not to play Boomerang, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rag could have been good. Boom is still amazing. So much yeah. damage. Azure Drake is not bad. Yeah, especially with that swipe. Okay. No Machine Inventor. Doesn't do much. I discard this card from the deck. I don't think it's very good. I think Shredder is just straight up better. Oh, Gromash. Yeah, he's gonna go hope that it hits no Gem. Oh, that's oh really my good. god, that's so that's good really for the good. battle rage. That's the best case scenario that could have happened. It's pretty sick. Execute. Execute is Execute. really huge too. Yeah, he has the inner rage as well. Yeah, so now. But then maybe you want to keep inner rage for Gramash. No, you? you need to deal with everything on the board, yeah. otherwise you die. Uh, exactly. Most likely. You just play around the combo right now, so you battle, like you Next battle rage, execute, kill the bomb, hero power afterwards, and hope the bomb doesn't hit your face. Uh, yeah, you could actually. You can still ar armor up if you really want to. Well, yeah, that, that you you will you will armor up for sure. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. So the combo will not kill you. Yeah, it, if, if the bomb doesn't hit your face. All right, so the bomb is not hitting face. Kill the Nimsh Inventor. Nimsh Inventor. <laughs> Did you just say that? <laughs> yeah, I just didn't say that. <laughs> okay. Save from the combo, having the Tories and getting. Combo cards reduced. Forsen, you said that before. It's pretty good, I heard. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. I mean, now we can use the Warson Commander and then it's Grimasa's Charge. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but seriously, uh, Drake here for sure. Drake swipe. You want to swipe that? Unless you get a Wrath. Oh. Shredder is not Actually, bad. Shredder is uh, probably... I mean, you don't want to leave a, a Therusian up. The problem with Shredder is that uh, Torison can kill Shredder, and then if there's like a Hunt Creeper, you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're open to like a pattern play. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I like Swipe. So come on, you shout maybe. Oh, Death Spite, actually interesting. Yeah, but this is gonna be a Grimash turn. Grimash play. There's you want to play else. around the combo. Yeah. I mean, stuff could stunt if can play around the combo for so long that he will just keep on playing it around yeah. it. Yeah. Next turn. Uh, well, it's pretty cool that uh, this deck actually has different wound conditions than Grimash. Like, you can use your Grimash here. Oh, oh. There it is. There is the force, but there's and no the VGH. But there's a shade. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really matter. matter. I yeah. mean, like, you're afraid here to die to, like, uh, I mean, you've seen double whirlwind thing, double inner rage. Like, you Every know. Every damage was already used. Yeah. There, no, there's the one whirlwind oh, left. Whirlwind. Uh, Wait, is, what is, is this? this <laughs> uh, no, it's not. You can't play. You can't play um, six. All of those cards. It's yeah, eleven yeah. mana. And even then, even then, even then, the faceless manipulator. One faceless would seal the game. It would. Would indeed. How much damage is it, by the way? Just for the science. The the, the most damage he can do is uh, is seven. Uh, with Death Spite and the Green Patron charge. Yeah. The Whirlwind is not more damaged than Death Spite. All the right. thing is, Sunset actually can survive. Uh, the Shade is going to be only 3 damage, right? So, no, actually, no. No, no, no. no, no Shade to, is. Yeah. He, ca Shade he can, can no longer. No, longer yeah. He can no, no longer hard. play around the combo, and that it really upsets him. Yeah. Uh, so, this is actually going to be the end. But, you know, he's going to gamble here. He's going to have to trade the, the, tra the Grimash into the 5 5 here. And uh, just hope. Hope that he does not no have combo. the combo, but and well, for a fact, for the longest time there was no combo in hand, but he just drew it. Uh, the the force of nature, so yeah. All right, so that's gonna be it. And are you on the back of the combo? Is going to take game number three, extending lead two to one versus Stanislav Sivka, and he will only need to win with the rogue deck to 
eliminate Stanislav from this tournament. And that's really good for him too, because like this right. warrior is not really good against Rogue. And I mean, Druid against Rogue is like 50-50. Some people say different, like Firebat says that uh, Druid is really unfavorite. Uh, yeah, I, think, I, th I think it is also unfavored. Mm. It all depends on the value of Rogue. Fire about Rogue is like 90% versus the field. Versus <laughs> <laughs> <as laughs> <laughs> everything? Versus everything? Yeah. And I've seen that. Like, I've seen Firebat <laughs> win like versus Face Hunters easily rushing them down. But here we have RDU and Stanislav Sivka. Those are our guys of the hour. And they're ready. Stanislav eating a lot. Uh, you have to keep being energized, you know? Just so your brain works. We need something for the Twitch chat. We, we have a lot of OPOP -OP for sure for Stanislav. Is there a Stanislav army? Uh, I don't think like he streams, but he doesn't stream often, so I don't think he has a sub most. Stan Stan boys. Stan boys. Sifka Stan boys. Sifka boys. Stan boys. I like it. Um. Pretty good hand for both players. Mm -hmm. I would say the rogue is slightly favored uh, with the, that that curve. Oh no. Mm. Hmm. This is awkward uh, because you would like to mm -hmm. innervate shade, but yeah, you don't do anything. No, here. you don't. Yeah. You, you go for innervate shredder into shade turn three. Yeah, it's much better. Yeah, innervate is such an interesting card. It's just fixing the curve for druid. Uh, what about the rogue hand? What about RDU's hand? It's I good. I think it's really every, good. every hand with a four drop is good in this matchup. Um, like, all he needs pretty much is just like. But like maybe one more backstep and he's a perfect hand almost. I think double shredder is actually amazing for Druid. Mm. Yeah, it's really good because you can coin out the first shredder and then you can decide whether or not you want to play the second shredder or if you want to play poison SI on turn four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I like it. I like it a lot. The question is, do you stab on two? Do I what? Do you stab with your weapon two? Oh, no, 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 you no, don't. no, you don't. You don't. Are you sure? I'm 100% I'm, I'm I'm sure. sure. <laughs> Uh, I'm just having fun because yesterday yeah. Force the Six had a Arky? argument. Yeah. Okay. So I think you might keep the Innovate for lore, but like you don't really need to have lore on board against Rogue usually. You just want to have pressure. Like you want to pressure the Rogue player. Uh, so I think the Shredder is definitely better. So yeah, exactly pressure. Like how you you win this game as Druid, just uh, oh my God. getting those minions and winning eventually with a combo. But yeah. Why are, are you upset about the backstab? That no, it's good. It's really good. It it's is. It's really good. You <laughs> probably use it now, uh, actually. Really? Backstab is a 7? No, no, no. Just no, no, dagger no. B uh, backstab. Oh, so you do stab on 2, suddenly. You stab minion. You don't stab the face. <laughs> I mean... There is some... I'm actu actually, I'm not really sure if you... There is some merit to just uh, hero powering mm -hmm. here, but I mean... If you're gonna take that damage anyway, you might as well kill it, you know. Uh, but he's gonna go ahead and use the poison and then S uh, backstab S I the following turn. Or if he feels like this is something really dangerous, like a four-one pirate, he might uh, backstab right now. Yeah, that's actually decent. But yeah, it's fine because oh, oh well, you can't play the S I. Oh, you no, wait, no, you, you no, can't no, play no, the S I. It's, yeah, it's, it's a combo. It's a combo. Yeah, it's combo. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah S I might. I will call it the Force and Spider. Force and spider. spider. I actually remember when uh, Dr. Boom came out, he actually played this card. Yeah, 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 yeah. You played it in the Miracle Rogue. Yeah, yeah. you did. That was lo long before Dr. No, Boom, no, it was in Next Ramas. Yeah, it was Next in Next Ramas. Ramas. Nah, yeah. It was like... When Handlock was really popular yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything that happened. It's had actually really good. Yeah, uh, it, was, it, had, it was favored against yeah. Handlock, which was very unusual. For me, it's a Force and Spider point. because Force and lost really badly to that Spider. One point. I mean, it screwed me over yesterday too. Oh yeah, it screwed up me in, in the tournament. I yeah. remember, but I know I, don't, I get screwed over by mana rays and spiders all the time, so I don't keep track, you know. <laughs> Doomsayers. <laughs> Doomsayers. <laughs> yeah, never lucky, baby rage. Never lucky. All right, so we're back. What's the play for RDU? Like, he will innervate the Ancient of Lore next turn. So yeah, just wrath. You need to uh, wrath here. I mean, the swipe is more mana efficient because uh, hero power is not really doing anything. But you want to keep that for Violet Teacher. Power yeah. teachers, exactly. So rough hero power phase, you don't attack with the shade because there's a weapon. Yep. And turn. But it's always good to think about stuff like do you swipe with the rough. Yeah, it's definitely a good point. I mean, uh Ardu might actually not run a lot of because he plays double shredders. Um which is interesting. But we'll probably see still one wild teacher there. But Sun Sifka can't know that. 
Yeah, he might be playing one. Mm -hmm. He might be playing two. Like, I've seen different decks. He might be playing one R. That uh, rush in there is pretty useful. Uh, wow, Rag. That is a great card. But he's gonna go ahead and in innovate out the lore. He might pick up another innovate for. No, wait, is this his last innovate? Uh, mm, yeah. Yes, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's he he innovated Shredder. Yeah, yeah. He innovated Shredder, yeah. So, no more innovates, but he might pick up a uh, Wild Growth. Wild Growth yeah. and Swipe wouldn't be a bad turn 6 into Ragnaros. Well, Ragnaros is still great as a card, even on 8. Can he pick up. So, this is kind of awkward right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really awkward, actually. Uh, the Blade Flurry is. You he wants to keep you it. You for play Azure yeah, Drake. You yeah. play Azure Drake next turn. No, well. It's not even that good with preparation because it doesn't kill the the five five. Yeah. So I'm if you if you wait one turn now, you can actually play Oil and Blade Fury. Yep. Alright. But he's gonna trade here for sure. At least with the spell power. Well, but the, there is not a spell power minion uh, for for RDU. Yep. There is indeed. I mean, he doesn't even need it. He just uh, goes for oil. Uh, yeah, I would say fire. Belcher and then trade um, Shade uh, with the Drake, and that's about it. Yeah. Because uh, four three Shredder and a three one weapon is not very useful against a Belcher. It overkills and. Uh, oh, he, he actually might be thinking swipe. about trading both right now, as it seems. Well, no, no. I mean, he can still play the swipe, and uh, if you get like one one, even like something with two power, you can still. Swipe and shape. Yeah, it. it's actually a good play to actually attack the Shredder with mm -hmm. the Shade and then swipe the Drake and Hero Power to kill off a 2 health uh, 2 drop. Uh, yeah. But that's pretty much the only thing you can kill off. Unless there is a Loroku Show. <laughs> Loroku Show, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I guess the attack with 5 5 is good. Oh, so he's just gonna swipe it. That's interesting. That's really aggressive. Um, yeah, so I actually kind of like it maybe because like, he already has uh, 6 damage in hand, he has Rag in hand. like. Yeah, uh, Rogue being on 12. Mm -hmm. And what is that one Farsi you're going to do? <sighs> but this Blade Flurry here is going to be, be pretty good. Yeah, I, I don't see any other play than Blade Flurry really. Well, Blade Flurry. Not when you're this low. Yeah. So what you do is you attack face with Shredder. You eviscerate your own Shredder. You get Cobalt Geomancer. You play Falnas, <laughs> and then you Flurry for five. No, you Tinkers. <laughs> And you you just oil play for it, yeah. Oh, come on. I want to see the Geomancer. So, <laughs> Rag can't come out quite yet. Mm. Silence Keeper. No, I think Belcher. I think Belcher. Belcher hero power, yeah. Yeah, yeah Belcher counters uh, Shredder, so sorry. Oh, he's oh. going for, his, for the kill? Oh, that's awkward. Really awkward, actually. It's uh, I like it. I like the pressure here uh, that he puts on. Um, so, can you? What do you do now? Um, you no. could do you do you like shredder? Shredder eviscerate and trade. Clear the board. Yeah, I can see that. If you if you just play Thorison, is that good? No. Like you just drop Thorison? No, 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 no. no you, you have to clear. Like it's all right actually because you can trade with your knife juggler in the four two, and then you have uh, the Russian. But uh, there are some combos you can wait, die who's to. Who's Russian? Who's Russian? Who's Russian? The Russian. The Russian. Uh, I is Shredder? No. No. The Russian. Em is the Russian. Oh, Emperor. 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 Emperor is Russian. Emperor. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Because like all the Come time on, you're talking about Russian, and I was like, who the fuck is Russian? Emperor the Russian. Okay. You know or nothing, John Snow. <laughs> or if he's <laughs> Japanese, he's actually Emperor Toriko. You go rag here. And yeah. hit the face like the real Dennis. Dennis rag. Let's do it. Well, face is actually going yeah, to seal it. Yeah, exactly. No, it, there is... There can uh, be Belcher. There can be Belcher. It can be anti yeah, bot. He can have anti bot. Well, there's no heal bot, no, no Belcher. So he can backstab, backstab your own Thalnos. Thalnos for ice block. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I'm speechless right now. It's the force in play. Or you could just hope for a taunt from the Shredder, and uh, like a Frostful Grunt, mm. uh, yeah, an I mean, Tron. We should get minions with Unstable Ghoul. We should get minions unstable with Ghoul Reflect. Unstable Ghoul would be actually really good. What unstable Ghoul won't save him though. What do you guys think about minions with r Reflect? He has seven damage with the Force of Nature and yeah. two and three damage into that and four damage into. But he's just gonna play. He's not gonna play around anything. Yeah, he's just gonna kill Ragnaros and die. 
Yeah, he's dead. All right, think about minions with reflect. A minion that actually reflects damage. So Rag if Ragnaros hits the minion, the minion reflects damage to a random target on the opposing board. I think that's called Axe Flinger. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Uh, uh, All right, so I get what you see. I get, I get Stanislav Sivka is going to tie the series versus RDU. It's 2-2. Two two. We are going to game number I'm, I'm very disappointed they didn't use the top deck swipe there to tilt this opponent. <laughs> Well, that would, that would actually work for Sardu, I think. Yep. He is easily... He's irked. always talking about the top books. Yeah, he's kind of <laughs> emotional. Um, I don't know about any other person who's emotional at this seat right no, now. No, like, I think you <laughs> as a person, you're very calm. <laughs> yeah, I'm really calm too, so... But I mean, like, for now, for Ardu, it's actually pretty good. Like, the Rogue's matchup against the Warrior, uh, Green Patron Warrior, is pretty good. Uh, so he should be favorite to win this whole match. All right, so we are going to see Grim Patron versus Rogue, and I'm really excited to see the deck again. It's Grim Patron deck, BRM, boys. Everyone good in here. Everyone it good it in, in here. here. Get in here. All right, guys, if you're watching, and I know you're watching, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad, say hi, mom. We're watching <laughs> this, and uh, just and if you know friends. if you know Arduce, mom, tell her, like for sure at least. Oh shit, was <laughs> that shots? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so that's why it's really good here for all the shredders, yeah. for all the SI agents. Um, you definitely keep a death yeah. bite, no doubt about that. There's nothing else you would like to keep though. Double death bite is a bit overkill. Double the death bite, double the excitement. I'm very surprised that he did not keep uh, the shredder. Shredder, yeah. I was just thinking about it as well. So he does play Healbot. Yeah. He does play Healbot. So he actually could draw away mm -hmm. from me too. Job done. But that wasn't a winning play because that would leave up the Ragnaros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so let's evaluate the hands again. The evaluation hand play. Alesh, take the rogue hand. Uh, the rogue is actually pretty slow. I mean, uh, without a coin, he's not going to do anything next turn. Um, but from that point on, uh, his turns are going to be quite strong. If he picks up like uh, preparation, he's gonna have a lot of removal power. Um, so yeah, from turn four, he's gonna be really strong. Did you notice how he's most likely gonna re-equip dagger next turn, but he did not stab face to play around battle rage? Oh mm. man, it's the new meta playing around battle rage. New meta, like it totally changes the, how we use the hero powers. Yep, it's like being mage, you will not ping the face. Nope. Being the, not. being the priest, you will actually heal your, your opponent. opponent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. So, first, tell me about the, the hand of Stanislav Sivka here. Uh, it has a death spite, which is great. It doesn't have any card draw, which is a huge problem. Uh, you really want that Acolyte uh, into Battle Rage or something. Uh, even something like uh, Unstable Ghoul into an Acolyte to protect it is pretty good in this matchup. Because Rogue doesn't really have a good way of dealing 3 damage early on without using like Eviscerate to get behind uh, the taunt of an Unstable Ghoul to an Acolyte. Here, I would probably play the Unstable Ghoul uh, because if he has a 4 drop, he can't deal with Unstable Ghoul. Unless it's backstab as well. Just to get that out in play and then you can equip the Death Fight next turn when you can actually kill the 4 drop. I just can't wait for one player to pick this deck and just grind it so that he's so good about it. That might be show because he's really into warrior. And, uh, it doesn't really work like a warrior yeah, though. It's, not it's like saying warrior. that if you're good with Sue, you're good with handlock. It's like completely different playstyles. Uh, and Sue, and I mean, show is more of a like a control. control heavy player. He likes to play really greedy and the stuff like that. So I'm not sure if it's his type of deck, even though it's the same class. So if somebody can master the Green Patron deck, who would you call? Let's go Me. Sixo. Forsen, all right. Who else? <laughs> Let's I mean, go Sixo, I think. Sixo. Every player that has been like good Coletto. with uh, Miracle Rogue and, uh, and who's good with like Handlock, like those uh, decks that are require a lot of skill and like thinking and... Hyped. Uh, yeah, Hyped for sure. Hyped, hyped can do it. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of players. Getting that Ancient Watcher though is probably the worst one because he's not running Silence, uh, he's not running... It's actually worse than not having a minion at all because... Because uh, of oil. Because of oil, exactly. Oil can actually screw him over. Um, you can miss some damage there. The only thing it might be good for is tanking uh, Boombots. That's the only thing I can think of right now. Yeah. But otherwise it's just a negative card. 
like most of the decks can actually use Ancient Watcher, but here the body, like even in this matchup, like you said, only Boombots. Normally you can sometimes uh, tank the knives from Knife Juggler. You see how he didn't even, even heal, heal the Ancient, the Ancient Watcher, Watcher he because wants he doesn't deal. want the oil to hit it. Yeah, he just wants to die. Yeah. This is so curious. So, Grim Patron is probably going to be really strong next turn. Um, Coin boom. Yeah. Is he doing it right now? He's doing it right now. He wants to clear everything. I mean, he can, he can, he can go in a rage. Yeah. yeah. That's what he's going to do. Yep. And then kill off the... That's like kind of greedy. Just oh. like, don't play yeah. around the uh, flurry again. Yeah, but there's no flurry for now, so it's actually... Good call for him. How is this matchup, by the way? Who has the advantage? The rogue, rogue has a slight advantage because of Blade Flurry. Uh, and they don't really have a lot of minions that you oh. can trade. Oh my Look god! Look at that top deck! What a, wow. draw. what a draw. Sign of a good player. Sorry about that, bro. Cardio, please. Tinker, Oil, and Flurry. And Stanislav Sivka is already at 14. Yep. And like we already see that RDU has like double eviscerate and the oil in his end, so he has a lot of damage. And full board control with that ancient watcher. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about that. And actually, like this deck, it's completely different. It's uh, force instead already. This is completely different to normal warrior. This deck actually doesn't have any uh, health gain almost at all. Like he runs armor smith, I think we've seen one. it. Yeah, we've seen one armor smith. So there's some health gain, but apart from that, there's no health gain. So. No, actually, he's not, he's not running uh, Armor Smith this time around, I think. We haven't seen it from him. Have no, we seen no it? we've seen it, we've seen it, we've seen it. I saw one he played Green Patron where he played, but did we see it from Stun Yeah, yeah, we've seen it today. Okay. Yes. He, played, okay. he played Unstable Ghoul with Armor Smith. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah, you're right. You knowing, knowing this matchup, what do you say? Weapon up, um, oil, face, pass. Next turn, you attack face with the weapon again. You play Azurdrake and you deal 10 to face with double Azurdrake. It's kind of greedy. Yeah, I like face here a lot because you yeah, know there is no armor gain except for that single. Um, and it's 18 points of damage. Oh, he's actually going for Azurdrake now. He could even Edwin if he wants to. Um. Um, you can be. Worried about unstable wool if you go for my. I'm, I'm not sure I like this as a Drake, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't like the Drake. Like, I really like yeah. just going face. Like, I think like, now you have to play the Edwin. Yeah. Like, Fan of Knives is terrible. You kind of get yourself in a board control game. Not. I don't know. I don't like it. Oh, this is weird to me. Mm hmm. <laughs> So what do you do here? Um, you, you can't can take any more damage to face. Yeah. So you, you, know slam, you slam the Azur Drake, hopefully yeah. get Armor Smith. Um, not Armor Smith. I think you play... <sighs> you can execute it. Uh, yeah, execute is fine. Yeah, I think execute is fine. I think you play the Unstable Ghoul for sure. Yeah, you do, and you armor up. Yeah. Is the play, but then again, then you don't might want to execute. You might want to go with the boom bots because they're mm -hmm. gonna die anyway because of unstable ghoul. So you can trade two uh, boom bots into the Drake. But then the thing is, like, you might want to just keep the Asian Watcher on board for the oil. Yeah, but it's gonna die anyway yeah, if if, um, if he kills the unstable ghoul. By the way, being Stannis to Sifka, how afraid are you of dying? Next time? Pretty, pretty, pretty scared, pretty scared. considering he is staggered up to hit face for one. I get. You haven't seen a single eviscerate. There's one more oil in the deck. So one more blade flurry. Stanislav is at 15. Deadly poison. That kind of puzzles me though uh, that he didn't play the unstable ghoul. He, here he. Can he weapon up now? Or is it too late because there's too much damage coming? He's actually one damage of lethal. Yeah. One damage Three, of lethal. Four, yeah. It's five. Six. And plus eight. eight. Yep. That's pretty sick. Never left If you would dagger up in the very beginning and stab the face for one. That's true. Instead if of playing around battle rage, that would have done it. It would have done it. That was the one damage that you're missing right now. What did he do in turn three? He did actually uh, hit the face and then dagger up. 
He did? Yeah. Turn 3 he did. But did it was after the armor up. It was after the armor up. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah you mentioned why is he not stabbing the face if he's going to redagger anyway. Yeah. He didn't attack. That was the one damage. It was the one damage, but it was still a correct play. Yeah, I think so too. No um. need to judge people in hindsight. <laughs> True. So, how are you actually scared of dying? He's probably not that scared. You've already seen one floating Berserker. Um, but. Uh, I would be pretty scared. Would be? Yeah. So oh, wait, there's a death bite. There's yeah, death there's bite. 12 hard. damage. I just, I just seen the death bite. I forgot about the death bite. Like, Grumash kills you. Yeah. Throwing charge can kill you. Well, there's. Oh. 22 anyway, so RDU is dead. Yep. So that would be it. Oh, he tried to attack as well and didn't have time to yeah. attack with the weapon. Still, so this is for Stanislaw Sifka. Yeah, this is lethal. enough. This is 22 points of damage if I can't count correctly. And RDU Whoa. will realize it now. What a series, guys. What a series. RDU eliminated, joining Life Coach. Um, there is still one more Nihilum player in the game, still ties. And Lothar obviously advancing to top 8. But Stanislav Sivka, what a mastery here. Um, well, he might be the one who was actually going to master this deck, the Patron. Maybe. He played a lot of this deck before uh, this tournament. He played a lot of ladder. He got like top 10 with it. Uh, so he has some practice with it. I think he is sure. the most successful player in this tournament with that deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Probably. For sure. Probably. We had some pretty funky plays um, with this deck before. Yeah, I didn't practice it enough. I played it like for one day when I brought it to the deck here. So. All right, I'm just kidding, man. I like it's fine. It's horse. fine. I, I know it. Like I didn't play the deck. I, I, I should have practiced it. That's more. a highlight from yesterday. The, the yeah. most funniest thing that happened. I'm so yeah. sorry about that. It was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, so I think I'll get stunned here, right? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Alex. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to have you to more like helping us with the cast. Uh, but right now we're going to talk with the man himself. Yeah. Can you please get him for us? Yeah, I'll get him. I'll get him. All right, for so we have three series down, five more to go. Mm -hmm. Who is going to, to join Stanislav? So the next game will be Colento versus Bismarmota. I think uh, Gara wanted to cast that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it would be cool to have Gara on the side. But uh, right now, Stanislav is like running around. Hello. Hello again. Congratulations. You advanced to the top eight. And uh, again, exceptional play with the, um, with the Warrior. Yeah. What do you think about uh, the whole series? Yeah, uh, I went a little bit greedy with my build. I've cut some anti-aggro cards from all the decks. From Druid, I've cut Zombicho. From Dread Corsair. From Warrior, I cut Corsair bec because I felt Arius was going to play some more control decks, which happened. So my lineup was fine. And yeah, it turned out well. It was pretty close here, though, but... All right. Yeah, it worked out. That's pretty good. And um, next, you are going to face either Colento or Besmarmota. Who do you want to play, Colento or Besmarmota? I would like to play Colento because I've lost to him in EU versus China in top eight, so I would like to get my revenge. All right. Are you going to change the deck a bit? Decks a bit? It will depend who I'm going to play against. But he wouldn't tell obviously, us. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to change something. It would be like not very wise to play exactly the yeah, yeah. <laughs> thirty cards in every deck. Because I agree. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. All right, first, any more questions about the matches? Not really. I just think you played very well as yesterday. Um, and I wish you luck, man. Yeah, I yesterday I didn't play very well, but I also decided. I think, you, I think you played pretty good with the green pattern deck overall, at least. Uh, I think uh, it would be nice to see it in the finals as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, I had a rank free on the ladder, but then I practiced with the green pattern and, like, fall for, like, 4,000 places be before I get used to it. Yeah, at, yeah. At a little bit, like I'm still making a lot of mistakes, but the deck is so difficult to handle. Sometimes you, you know, have to rely on top deck. Sometimes you want to play with cards you have. So it's so difficult to balance your plays. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you just yeah, drop out your hand and sometimes you need to hope for top deck. So. All right, guys, you hear it? A Magic Pro, pro player is saying that Harson is difficult to play mm -hmm. and everybody thinks it's just playing cards and, you know, so, yeah. yeah. All right. I wish okay. you good luck, man. Okay, thank you guys. For yeah, congratulations again. And uh, I think we'll be ready to go into the break. Mm -hmm. uh, so, guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to get back. Colento versus Bismarmot.